Hi, everyone. Please let me know if you can see us. Hey, yes, you can. That's great. Hi, Catherine. This is Grisha enjoying himself. He's going to be spending another tour with mommy. Say hi, Grisha. Hi. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're beginning this. Uh, well, okay. Let me show you around a little bit. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. Uh, this is not actually where I planned to do the tour, but you can clearly see that this is a beautiful place. And this is um, the entrance. It's just a foyer of a residential building. Normally, this is closed. But, uh, well, you, we always come, I always come uh, beforehand. You know, I like to check the area, you know, I like to check the transport and stuff like that for my tours, be it virtual tour or actually a physical tour, actual tour. And we just, we were passing by this house and it was actually on, um, on, on our itinerary for today, but normally the door is closed and we saw it open. So I couldn't just miss that chance to show you the beautiful interior of this uh, solo lucky house in Tbilisi. Yes, Adrian, you're here. <laughs> good morning, good morning. And um, let me show you the beauty of this house. We, officially, we are to begin in a couple of minutes from now, actually. I hope that's okay, I hope that's better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Bratia. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, Ceylon of brothers, right? So this house built was well, well was built, was commissioned and used to belong to the Ceylon of brothers. And it's written here, but I will explain it a little bit later because we actually officially we haven't started yet. And I want to adjust my phone just a second. Oh, yeah. I hope that's okay now. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Grisha, too. If you go, it's going to turn on the light. The light's going to turn on. Just go up. Go up. It will turn on. Go on. Go, go, go. Hi, Natalie. Go, 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 go. The light should, be, should turn on. You see? <laughs> Hi, Lasta. Good to see you. Hello, hello. Yay. <laughs> okay, well, it's time to begin. So let me introduce myself properly. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone who's watching us live and who's going to be watching us, well, as a recording. My name is Anna, and for about two months already, I've been staying in Tbilisi, in the capital of Georgia, a beautiful country in the Caucasus, and I've been taking you around the old city and a relatively younger city. And now we are, we are just, um, I think it's the fourth episode that we've been exploring uh, Sololaki, the 19th century area. And uh, actually, we I was supposed to begin a minute away from here. But on my way to the starting point, I saw this door open, the door to this house. And we are in the foyer of a, of a beautiful late 19th century house and I want to show it to you in full splendor so I'm gonna flip the camera hi Sarah good to see you hi Tariq it's hard to imagine I mean I mean I've seen different tenant houses or profit houses and it's very much in style of 
St. Petersburg. So this is a residential building, but it's not just a residential building. It belonged to Ceylanov brothers. We don't know much about this family. We know that they were, <laughs> they were filthy rich and they made their fortunes by supplying uh, tobacco to the Russian Empire and Tbilisi, starting from 1801 up until 1917, was the part of uh, the Russian Empire. So Ceylon brothers supplied tobacco, uh, well, to the entire uh, Russian Empire. So they, they, they earned good money. And what most merchant, merchants would, would be doing, uh, they would invest the money earned in the property. And many of them, most of them, would be building houses for themselves, but they would also want their houses to bring them profit, not only cost them. Oh, okay, let's do that. So Grisha would like to read us something. Grisha, careful, okay? Grisha wants to read us something in Georgian. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Can you hear him? Okay, so, well, uh, I want to show you something. So Grisha is basically trying to read to us in Georgian, by the way. So he doesn't speak Georgian, but he can he can read Georgian. Well, uh, I'm not sure if you could hear it well because because it's loud outside. I'm wearing a headset, but we will we will try it. I want to show you something. So this house, well, it's just reading. It's just knowing letters. It's not really about uh, it's it's not really about the language. It's just how you read the books. Uh, I'll just read the letters. But yes, it is impressive, I know. So uh, there was two people, Benedict Tellingatter and Isaac Schichman. They are believed to have been exactly the authors, well, the, the architects, and also in charge of the interior works of the house. Yeah, I will, Grisha will read it again when I finish the story of the house before we head to somewhere else. And uh, well, they just invested, they built them the money in the house for themselves. Uh, and then they, it was turned, it was part of the house was made into a profit house where people would be renting the, the rooms from them. Well, this is believed to have been the entrance, the foyer to their house, to their apartments. Normally they would be on the second floor. And, and then the other, Half of the building, other part of the building would be for, for tenants. And look at this. So it's been recently restored. Uh, these frescoes are just, well, they, they tell the story of different parts of the world, of different, uh, of different areas. There is an Af this is America. It's written here, America. It's written in Russian because in the 19th century, Russian was the, the official state language, but Georgian was never really forbidden. Uh, and it's interesting, so they're showing also the Native Americans here. All kind of diverse people. And this, this is Russia, by the way. It's, it's, it, it has the, well, old Russian style churches here, uh, peasants. And it shows the uh, the wealth of of the grains and cereals, and the uh, huts. The huts look more like uh, you know Ukrainian huts, but back then, uh, back then Ukraine and Belarus were also part of the Russian Empire. This is Asia over here. This is Asia, and this is Africa. So that's quite a quite an educational type of uh, uh, interior. <laughs> Very educational. <laughs>
those seem so artistic. Yeah, 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 they are. They are artistic, and they've been recently restored. So, uh, and of course, the ceiling decoration. So now you see why normally these doors are closed. So uh, because, well, I, I can assume why, because the people who live in this house are just sick and tired of tourists uh, hanging out in the foyer of their house. And it might, it might get really loud because if, if a tour groups come and then with a guide, I can understand. I can understand that. And uh, I know that it's it's really it it costs a lot of money to restore these uh, these frescoes or these decorations. Uh, and there was a fire several years ago, like a dozen years ago. There was a fire in one of the apartments, and uh, many well, basically the uh, half of the building was uh, in, covered in smoke, you know, and in uh, in soot. Luckily, luckily. After several years of painstaking restoration, it was all good. So, Ceylon of Brothers. Grisha, can you please read it again? Can you read it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a second. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Okay, so here is the headset. Yeah. Can you read it? Okay. The building cloca, cloca, oh, in, in Georgia. In Georgia. <laughs> Ta the the beads street number number eighteen. Can you read us in Georgian? Can you read us Tbili Suri A Tak не знаю Так Р Р Р Р Р Р Р Р Р Р Камбр Эули. Спасибо за это. Спасибо. 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 So, please let me know if you've been able to hear at least something from what Brisha was saying. Um, I, I, just, I, I handed him the, um, the headset. Oh, that's great. And obviously, I don't understand a word he was saying, so I just have to assume that he did it right. Well, as much as he could, of course. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you so much for your patience. So, it's Grisha. He just has to tag along because I have nowhere else to get him to. But I'm really enjoying taking him with me. No, that's okay. That's okay. So, and uh, if you enjoy this tour, you can always support us. There is a link to my PayPal and buy me a coffee account. This is how you can treat Grisha to a uh, baby chino. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, let me show you this house from uh, from a side. Please follow me. We need to cross the road. And so this is exactly the same street we were, the Lectioni to Bigze. That's the street. And uh, over there, you see a mountain. It's just what it's the Solalaki mountain, the one that we have seen already multiple times from different from different uh, uh, areas. And that's the that's the Ceylon of house, the Tobacco King's house. It's just a residential building, as you see. And there used to be only two floors, but then uh, another one was added shortly after. And it's believed that the second uh, part of the house was added a little bit later. So maybe that at some point they decided to invest a bit more money to, uh, to earn a bit more. Who knows? So, yeah. 
Oh, Julie. <laughs> exactly, exactly, Julie. So your kids learn from you. It's not only when you just teach them things, but when they just see you do something. Absolutely. Well, I, I don't really have the courage to homeschool, to homeschool, don't have the courage and discipline to homeschool my, uh, my son, but we do a lot of, you know, a lot of edutainment. Rish, let's go. So we continue to explore Solo Lucky. If you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, feel free to contact me and I can send you the link to watch the recording of the live stream. Uh, and uh, the next episode is already scheduled for March 31st for next Sunday, same time. There's one more house I want to show you. Let's stop here, Grisha. Not this one, not this uh, hotel. Just a second. Oh, Robert, thank you so much. I'll pass it on to Grisha. Thank you. Thank you for your words of encouragement. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, Ronnie Lynn, this is so sweet. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. So just from across the street, basically the opposite, the state line of house, the Tobacco King house, there is another residential building. Again, it used to be of two floors, and then the other one was added at some point. You see it's less ornate, definitely less sophisticated in its uh, decoration, but that's that's okay. And uh, um, it's... It used to belong to Krasilnikov family. They were a very rich uh, family from Azerbaijan. They owned several oil wells. There's something, there are so many oil magnets here in Sololaki. So that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, what kind of Rockefellers lived in, in, uh, in this area. And this house, I'll move a little bit. Uh, and let's cross, Grisha. Let's cross. Luckily, there are not too many cars uh, today. On a business day, it's usually more. It's more crowded. And we can go also inside in the backyard to see what it's like. So from the outside, it looks very European, right? Uh, but from the back, it's different, of course. So uh, we don't know much about this family. We know that they were really, really rich. And then the father, who had six children, passed away. And every child inherited an oil well. Uh, and uh, one of the ch children was Victoria Krasilnikova. Oh, yeah. That's what I love about Belisi. That's the Belisi style. That's the laundry hanging and drying on the balconies. That's the winding staircase, the, the wooden balconies. That's the Belisi style. That's, that's, that's what I love. The cypress trees. Yeah, we're going to be talking about some cypress trees today, some kitties, some doggies. Lovely. <laughs> so you see, with Georgia, it's exactly this way. It might look like a really more well, European country with definitely, definitely a European mindset, but it's so Georgian, it's so unique, and it's so sweet, honestly. So we, one of the children that inherited an oil well was Victoria Krasilnikova. Um, and she married Ivan Merakov. I hope you see it. Oh, you're losing me. Okay. No, it could be because the walls are really thick. So I'll, I'll move outside. Please let me know if, if it's better now. Grisha, turn around, please. Turn around. Please let us know if it's better now. And we'll need to cross from here. And I will be standing in just from just on the out just on the outside. So we need the house. Uh no. So, I, uh, thank you for baby Tina. <laughs> Say it again. Thank you for baby Tina. Thank you for baby Tina, everyone. <laughs> exactly. Okay, it's okay. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you. That's great. So, uh, Victoria Prasilnikova had an oil well. She married Ivan Merakov, who was basically a pediatrician. 
And uh, in 1911, they decided to sell an oil mine, an oil well, sorry. And they did a great, this was a perfect choice because some six years later, it would have been confiscated from them by the Soviet government. So they did a great job. And uh, they were they they were well off and they would be comfortably well off up until actually the end of their days. Unfortunately, their only son, Suren Krasilnikov, uh, was a gambler and uh, he uh, he made a lot of debts and the family eventually had to sell the apartment. Um, they just owned an apartment here. It wasn't the entire it, it wasn't like the entire house that belonged to them, but they just had an apartment. Uh, here, so they were not they were not from the village. Sea. Misha, let's go. So we continue our exploration of Sololaki, and we're gonna we're gonna have to go all the way straight ahead. And you might have noticed already a couple of hotels here. So it is a touristy area, and over there is, by the way, a pedestrian street, just a walking street. Um. Okay, careful. Let's cross. There, this is a very touristy part of Sotolaki. There are lots of cafes, uh, shops, hotels. Well, there are many hotels here, like almost, almost all the international hotel branches, you, you can find them here. Okay, thank you, Maria. Okay, it's great to know that the connectivity is improved. I want to show you basically just one house, but I want to just a second. Okay, Grisha, Grisha wants to tell you something. Yes, Grisha, there you go. I am happy here. Say it again. I am happy here. You're happy here. It's so great to know. Thank you. <laughs> okay, it's great to know. Let's move on. Come here. I hope you've been able to hear this. I really hope. So, but we go on. So these are, well, like just all these buildings, uh, they are residential. Obviously, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of Airbnb. Um, it's definitely a bit more expensive than in other areas, but it's kind of, it's kind of clear why it's like this. And even though it's a, it's a walking street, of course, the, uh, of course, uh, of course, the, well, the, the uh, the taxis that that take tourists just nice uh, to to hotels of course they can they, they can come here and it's it's just causing a lot of <laughs> hustle okay and you must have you must have noticed already the house I wanna I wanna show you this looks like a palace to me but it's not actually it's the this the classical example of the tenant house, a profit house. <laughs> SL, thank you so much. Grisha, come here. So this house, I have no idea even how to film it properly because it's too big and there is no way I can actually film it all together. One, one camera really can, just my camera cannot capture it. Look at the size. So this is the late 19th century, early 20th century example of uh, Art Nouveau architecture. And even here, you can see on the very top, which used to be definitely a very expensive apartment, <laughs> there is a laundry getting dried, you see? I love it. I love it. And they must have a really great view over there. So this was a very expensive house. It was commissioned. I am very happy here. Say it again, Grisha. I am very happy here. You're very happy here. I'm so happy to hear this. I'm so happy to hear this, Grisha. <laughs> 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 
no, he's not worn out by this movie. I am, but he's not. He can jump around all day long. I have no idea where he gets his energy from. And uh, <laughs> what is worse, that he has a die week of school because they study like five weeks and then uh, every five weeks they have one week of holidays. <laughs> I'm not super happy about this, but I know this is important because kids uh, spend at school for the entire day and they get really, really tired. Okay, so I, I want to take you, uh, of course, there in the backyard. So let's see what it looks like. And again, you, I hope you won't lose me again, but it might happen. But I don't want to miss out on the chance to take you there. Oh, oh, Natalie, thank you. And there is a nice house also behind. It be, but actually, it is part of this house. It's just, uh, just another house uh, built, connected just to it. I'm not, I'm not sure if it was the original plan, but that's what it looks like at the back. Very Georgian, right? This is definitely not St. Petersburg style. That's not. It's very Georgian. And I like this combination. Well, if you remember my tours from back St. Petersburg times, you remember that just behind the most expensive houses on the Nevsky Avenue, there would, that would be very similar, uh, similarly looking, uh, yellowish, dusty, shabby walls, because there was no really need to take, to give a lot of attention to the, to the backside, because the facades, that was the cover, that was some, that was supposed to sell the house, not, not the backyard. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. In just a minute. Good. I hope you can hear me well. I had to readjust my headset. And so this house belongs to a Mant Mantashi family. I've been talking about them a lot in my recent tours because they were one of the, they were one of the, the richest families uh, in Tbilisi and I would say even in the entire Russian Empire and actually I, I could easily say even in the entire world because the Mantashevs were oil magnets. They, uh, they built the big oil pipeline uh, uh, for, the, for entire Georgia, uh, Batumi, Kutaisi, uh, Tbilisi and uh, uh, he also wanted to spread and branch out in the West. We know that the Mantashev's family, and I would like to introduce you to the to the uh, to Alexander Mantashev, who, who was the one who started the business in the 19th century, Alexander Mantashev, and then his son. Let me, let me find a photograph for you. So this is his son, Leon Mantashev. He continued the business. And he, he was actually familiar with Rockefellers, with some of the most, some of the richest uh, people of the world. And uh, we know after the revolution of 1917, and I'm just going to pop uh, here, over here, just for a minute to show you that we are at the very heart of, of Belize, the the Liberty Square. That's the monument, and this is where we started our solo uh, my solo lucky tour several weeks ago. And it's not over yet because solo lucky is quite a big area with loads of stories. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. So we need to go back over there. What laundry uh, on the gym? <laughs> sorry, sorry, Robert. So this tradition to to dry laundry on the balconies, on the ropes and the balconies, it's been here uh, ever since those wooden balconies were introduced. And the wooden balconies, if you remember my yesterday's tour that I did for World Virtual Tours, I mentioned that the, the wooden balconies were... Uh, I would say they came into their own in the 19th century, 
an early 19th century when Tbilisi was uh, was rebuilt again after another fire, after another and the last onslaught. Uh, in, 19, in 1795 it happened and Tbilisi had to, it basically it had to burn, it had to rise from ashes again. And this is when the new architecture, the new style, the new face of the city was shaped, which is a combination of European style, because of course, after it became part of the Russian Empire, it was turned into a capital of the Caucasus region, which means that here, banks, educational facilities, army, uh, well, the representatives of the court, the viceroy, uh, they, would, they would move here and they would be residing here, as well as in other big cities, because Tbilisi was a, was a trade city, so the commercial center of the entire region, and uh, there, was, there was a lot of investment, there was a lot of expectations from it, and uh, it's only natural that there would be this uh, lavish uh, um, district. And of course there were, uh, how was say, ordinary districts, and quite poor areas as well. But this time we were enjoying ourselves in a, in a lavish uh, corner of Tbilisi. I would say that in a way it's a slice of uh, uh, old Europe, but uh, obviously with Georgian dressing. Now we, I want to show you the, uh, a lovely mural. Okay, Grisha. Okay, I just asked Grisha if if I wasn't walking too fast because it's a bit easy for it's a bit difficult for him to to walk really fast, so I had to keep pace. And I want to show you a mural. Let's cross the road. The little cartoon on the wall. So if I can zoom it in, that would be great. Oh yeah, I can. So you, every here and there you can find uh, big, really big scale murals in Tbilisi. It's normally done by one and the same artist. And they're quite, they're quite surrealistic. But that lamppost is really in the wrong place. But I like it. This is the combination of uh, something Georgian. This woman is wearing Georgian clothing and these are the Georgian warriors. And uh, she's holding a glass of wine, but everything else is still surreal. I'm not sure even where they are, but I like it. Yeah, there is. So there is street art, and there is just street. There's just graffitis that ruin the buildings, that kill the vibe. I totally get that. I totally get that. Well, we're uh, we're just turning to another street and yeah some graffiti but just disregard it this is the Lermontov street and Lermontov street uh, is uh, named after a Russian poet let me show you Mikhail Lermontov I've mentioned him quite a number of times already he was a uh, 19th century poet of romanticism and uh, he uh, he was uh, sent to exile here the thing is there is another russian poet alexander pushkin this exactly i told about him a lot on a number of my tours he is you know the russian byron like poet number one uh, alexander pushkin died and lermontov mikhail lermontov composed well composed a poem uh, where he criticized the government, so the, the, the Tsar, basically. And for that, he could have easily been exiled to Siberia. But thanks to some people who pulled the strings, he, he was sent here to the Caucasus to serve in the army. And when he came, he fell in love with the region. Like, I can't blame him, honestly. <laughs> and I would like to cross the street here to show you the beautiful house. Okay. Just a second. Yeah. So this is the freshly restored building, uh, European slash Persian style. 
thanks to the balcony and I like the way it looks next to the blue skies and I like that today is dry and sunny and like yesterday where we got soaking wet I really had to squeeze my coat out and uh, Lermontov when he traveled across Georgia he even made some illustrations thank you SL well these are just some of the illustrations that survived to our day so I would say he was talented not only in literature but also in in fine arts or oh, this one and these places exist it's not just the whimsical landscapes uh, imag uh imaginary landscapes no this is actually but this is uh this is in the caucasus region this is not really Tbilisi. this is in dagestan but it's not really far uh, and this is uh, this is in georgia it kind of gives you an idea of uh, how much beauty there is here in, in the Caucasus. Yeah, I understand, Robert. I know that graffitis are, yeah, I know. I know that it can cause a lot of damage and it's really quite expensive to, uh, uh, to plaster the entire building and you can't really make a patchwork, just like one or two patches here and there. You need to basically uh blast to the entire house which is really really costly okay so we move on this house is still waiting for its turn for restoration and it will come i know i know so i've come to terms with this i know it will happen okay so there's something else I want to show you. So we are okay, on the Macha Valley Street. And it's a tiny street, really short. And well, it actually used to be uh, in the in the late 19th century, which used to be the Wall Street of Tbilisi. They're used to every house on this tiny short street used to be an office of an insurance company or a bank or an investment company. Uh, there was a lot of it. A lot of it. And uh, this house, for example, so the offices, normally the offices would be on the ground floors and then the upper floors would be either just residential houses, well, tenant houses, the same idea, people would be renting uh and the property well and it would be the property of the of those companies so not only merchants just like well private people would be investing uh, the property could be um on the balance of any entity it doesn't have to be really a, a person it could be any company owning it and uh, i want to show you something let's go Grisha. well there are some really impressive houses here I really can't wait to show them to you and we are really close. But when it gets to Tbilisi, there is so much, there's so many like really gems that are hiding from you and you really have to know it. So let's see. It might also, again, we might have a worse connectivity here, but it will pass. And I really cannot but take you here because I want to show you this. Careful, careful, look at this. Can you see it? Can you hear me? This is an actual Cadillac. Nobody remembers already like when <laughs> it got here, <laughs> but it's been here for a long time. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. <laughs> it's a Cadillac, Grish, that's a Cadillac. That's a lovely car, right? <laughs> and by the way, it's standing next to the fountain. Uh, in the 19th century, every every house like that uh, would have a, its own well. Of course, now it's all now it all has the all the uh, uh, all the facilities, the running water, and everything. But back then, of course, it wouldn't be like that, and every house would have uh, would have a well. 
and many whales still has, have still be, been preserved. Some would be changed, of course, with time because there was no really need for a well now. But many houses still have it, and they use this uh, modernized wells to wash their cars. So I'm not even sure. Uh, we did, well, I haven't been able to find information, and there is not really a lot of information about this car. I assume at some point it's, it could have been, for example, a trophy car brought from the Second World War, brought from Europe by the Soviet army. That normally would be the case. Um, but as I said, I'm not sure. Okay, let's move on, Grisha. So Machabelli Strait, Ivana Machabelli Strait. Uh, by the way, Machabelli was also a, a, a Georgian writer. M many many streets in this area would be named after poets, after writers, and I'm so happy that this street wasn't named after Laurenti Beria, who used to live, actually, who commissioned to build this house for, for himself. Let's cross here now. Okay, wait. If you have seen uh, the, uh, um, the series of lectures, series of talks done by my husband, Misha, uh, I mean, I just, I tagged along but it was all like his research. Then you might remember Lavrin Tiberia. I'll show you his portrait, but I first want you to see the house. And yeah, now it's the, it's the headquarters of the Georgian uh, National Olympic Committee. I wanna show you his portrait. So Lavrin Tiberia basically uh, was the second person in the Soviet Union after uh, after Stalin. That's him, Lavrenti Beria. Just like Stalin, he was uh, he was Georgian, and uh, he would be uh, the head of the party, the kind of the secretary of uh, of, of Georgian region, and he commissioned to build this house for himself. And for the office, so it wasn't just residential building, it wasn't just his building, not private building, but also the offices. And there he had his, well, his apartment, offices, the gym, billiards. And here he would be, uh, he would be seeing different ministers, uh, well, different people. And we know that a couple of times the people who would visit him for a talk, you know, uh, just a talk. Let's go. Now we need to cross. Let's cross. Let's be quick. Very good. And there were a couple of couple of cases at least when people who just who would uh, who in the morning had an appointment with him, had a meeting or, or well whatever, um, they would die. They would be dead by the end of the day. Yep. So the regime of Stalin is a is a bloody one. And you know that I don't want, I don't even want to go into the details and waste the precious time because I still want to show you the beauty and I don't want to focus on, uh, on the, on the bloodshed and the Soviet regime. But if you want to know more, I, well, you can just contact me on, uh, through my website on your guide.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram and uh, ask for the links to to watch those uh, short lectures about Georgian about Georgians in uh, Russian and world politics and also Georgians in in world history <laughs> well i don't think that i don't think that that caddy would really cost a lot so there is another gem i've been meaning to show to you this is a gorgeous uh, house. It is now it now belongs to the Georgian Writers Society, but it was built in 1905 for a family uh, of Savajashvili. I want to show some of, some of photographs. And um, if you're if you are following 
together virtually Facebook page. So our guys collected that you must, you must have seen. Just a second. Well, you must have seen uh, the um, the announcement that I made today. And as a teaser, I mentioned that uh, today we'll find out uh, what Tbilisi has in common with the Titanic in uh, Hollywood and uh, Broadway. So speaking of Titanic, so there's something about Titanic here. But first of all, let me introduce you to the to the head of the family, David Sarajishvili. That's him. David Sarajishvili. So he made his fortune by by making really really good brandy and supplying it all across the uh, the Russian Empire and even abroad, even beyond. He was the official supplier of the Romanov family of the court as well. So it kind of gives you that kind of gives you an idea. And uh, well, you can see this huge mansion that he built for himself and his wife Elena. He didn't have children. We don't know the reason, but they were childless. So all the money they had, they would invest in taking care of less fortunate people, but talented people. They would be they would be sponsoring young artists, young scholars, writers. They would be giving them scholarships, sending them abroad to study in European universities. Architects as well. There was an architect uh, who was from from a really really poor family he lived from hand to mouth basically and his talent his talent was noticed by Sarajish really and uh, and he was given the scholarship he was sent to study architecture abroad and then he returned and uh, did a lot of decor did a lot of decoration of the interiors of Sarajish really's house the chat is not really moving. Please let me know if you can hear it, if you can see me. Well, and by the way, the uh, the brandy by Rajesh really is uh, still produced. It's still a pretty popular cognac of brandy. Um, well. Actually, it's cognac, but I assume that the cognac is not the right word for it because it should be from, from the cognac, so it's a brandy. Yeah, thank you so much for letting me know. Thank you. It's great. Thank you, Cindy. And thank you so much, everyone, for the PayPals and coffees and baby chinos for Grisha as well. He's a bit tired because actually we've been outside since the early afternoon. We did some walking in the bar. <laughs> He's a bit tired. He's really patiently waiting for mom to finish and take him um, for a treat. Right, Grisha, are you tired? You're tired. Tiny bit. I know, tiny bit. Just give mom another 15 minutes. Just 15 minutes and we're done. So, and speaking of the interiors, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Just that. Yeah. Um, I want to show you some photographs of the interiors. Oh, thank you, Asal. Thank you. So, just a couple of photographs. See, really, just a couple of them. Well, this is Art Nouveau, Grand Art Nouveau. This is just in one of the which is one of the rooms. Look at the size of the of the fireplace. It's basically the size of the entire of one wall of the apartment where we're living. Or, well, this is the staircase. This is just uh, one of the. It's just a section of the staircase that actually occupies the two floors. Or, or this one, the beautiful terrace. Or, okay, just one more. I know, I know, I've been teasing you enough. Or, okay, let me see. Or this one. There is, on the second floor, there is a museum of Sarajashvili family. And speaking of the interior, there's just one more thing to show to you. Is this. So 
I mentioned the Titanic. So, in the house of the Registry, there is a tile by Villa Roy Bosch and Company. And uh, this design of the tile, Villa Roy Bosch only made twice. Once uh, it was a commission from the Registry, and the second time, the second commission was from the Titanic. So, that Titanic tiles are gone now, but the uh, Registry, Villa Roy Bosch tiles are here. I know it's a beautiful house, and uh, well, who knows? I might be able to take you there inside on an exclusive tour. I'm working on it, so we'll see. We'll see. And look at the beautiful decoration. So, uh, of course, the really most extravagant houses you will see those kind of demons, you know, kind of creatures. So these ladies are the most very natural here to take visas to. Traditional ladies uh, that will do all the pastors and the decoration of the honorable houses. This is clear cut. This one. So these were the uh, for the protection, basically. So to protect the house from the evil, uh, from the family. So let's move on. Rich. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you. I'm happy you're in this building. A black one microphone. Okay. It's on the bag. It's on the big bag. Sorry? It's on the big bag. Ah, the, okay. I just lost. Give it. Yeah. It's on the bag. Okay. Thank you, Grisha. I've just lost the, the headset. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Grisha. Thank you so much. It's, it was just on my bag at the back. <laughs> it's good that you can hear me and I can hear and I can I can see you. Grisha, careful, please. I don't want to take you to, to a hospital instead of a instead of a cafe. So another house that I've been meaning to show to you. This one. Yeah, I promised you some more gorgeous buildings. So I need to check something. Let's let's see. Let's see. I fly. Yeah, you can fly. You're flying. Yeah. You can't definitely. We need to go. Can you can you wait here? Most of the Can you wait here? Okay. Just a second. And look at this movie style house. Natalie, you missed the story. You missed the story of the Titanic. So in the Sarajevo house over there, the one with the Georgian and Ukrainian flags. Of course, a lot of entire Georgia is supporting Ukraine. Grisha, come here. So I need to cross uh, the, the tiles on the floor, uh, on the terrace. Uh, they were designed by the company Villeroy Bo. No, no, no. no. And uh, they, for all they designed, they made these tiles only twice. Once for Sarajevo, and the, uh, the the second time they made it for the Titanic. So the tiles from the Titanic, the tiles on the Titanic, they're gone, but the uh, so just really Villeroy Bock tiles are still there. No, why would, um, Where you are? Yes. You're here with me and Billy Sigrisha. Uh, well, yeah. this house, look, there is Yeah, this is the street, Grisha. 
Matcha belly. Matcha belly street. Uh, it's a matcha belly street. Yeah. Uh, Rose street. I'm. I'm started. You started. So the street you started was the uh, Tabidze street. It was Tabidze street. Uh, so Grisha is learning some uh, uh, some geography. Uh, what's, what's this is Matcha belly street. Matcha belly. Uh, yes. Thank you, Grisha. It's so there's just a few more things, uh, one more building to show to you. This one looks pretty, yeah, pretty pity. Yeah, I know. Uh, but you can clearly see the, the former, the former splendor that the house used to have. And uh, this is a Moorish style. And you might remember those interesting um, spots, uh, you know, um, and. I don't know. I used to call I, I used to call them pimples, but of course it's not really a nice word to to say for beautiful uh, ornaments. But this is exactly something that was invented by one of the architects, and uh, everybody liked it. And you might have seen it a couple of times in other buildings. And this is now one of the features of uh, of Georgian uh, Moorish style and Georgian Art Nouveau. So, but this is a, this is the house that's still like less fortunate than the house I'm standing next to, and I would like to cross the street once again. Okay, and I want to take you to the corner uh, of the street to show you a beautiful house. Well, this house used to belong to a merchant Kalantarov. Uh, actually, he was the Armenian, like many. Uh, many inhabitants of this area, they were originally Armenians or also Jews. Because Sololaki is partly a Jewish quarter, which I haven't really mentioned many times, but I'm now finalizing a number of series on the George, uh, Jewish heritage in Belisi. Uh, and uh, I'll announce it shortly. But I want to show you something. Risha, careful. Thank you. So this is Mikhail Kalantarov. Uh, Armenian born uh, merchant who, as you can see, was a really from a really well to do family. Oh, sure, sure, Robert, that's not a problem. And if there's something that you, you kind of missed, you can always ask me to repeat. Grisha, пожалуйста, осторожно, я прошу тебя, я не могу тебя держать. Okay, so please wait. Спрячь, пожалуйста. Okay. So this is the house. This is the house. So you see, this is the proper Moorish style building. And uh, look at this. So definitely a very rich person could afford such a house that was that was made uh, with it with the attention to every tiny detail. Look at that. And I even need to step a little bit backwards, I think, so not to really collapse to the street. Look at that. I'll also cross the street and I'll take you on the other side of the street because otherwise you can't really you can't really see the the scale, I would say. And uh, uh, okay, Grisha, stop here. We need to cross. Just wait a bit. Wait a bit. Let's go. Let's cross. Oof. There you go. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Okay. There you go. I hope you can see the building. I hope you can see the house and and even even the the tower. I hope so. And if you're taking any screenshots, I think this is a really great screenshot opportunity. And this was the this was not a tenant house. This was just a mansion for one family. Kalantarov married an opera singer, and she was a really beautiful woman, and she was very popular, so there were a lot of potential husbands uh, around her, and she said she would marry only a man who would build for her a house that would look no better, uh, you know, that would look just no smaller than an opera house, than a theater, and I think he pretty much succeeded, and you see that. <laughs> 
Yes, absolutely. I know. I know it's gorgeous. Absolutely. And I want to show you a couple of things. Just a second. Uh, just uh, just about the splendor of this house. Unfortunately, the entrance is closed, and I couldn't really show you the foyer. But you might have seen. You must have seen a lot of um, a lot of the, well, stars of David. Uh, and in Belisi, it's really hard to tell whether it's just because it's a geometrical pattern for, um, you know, Moorish style, or it's really some, it's always really a Jewish symbol, like Magen David, the Star of David. It's hard to say. But in fact, here in Sololaki, um, the Jewish heritage is so much intertwined with, uh, with everything, because the Sololaki is partly the former Jewish quarter as well. And, uh, Many of those Armenian or Georgian merchants actually had the Jewish uh, Jewish ancestry, and there was never a problem. So um, it was never a problem. There are many interesting stories that I would definitely be sharing with you. But as of now, I would like to cross and take you uh, in the backyard. Okay. Okay, Grisha, just wait a bit. Come here. Come here. We need to cross. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good. Good. Yeah. We're here. And take a look. So we are now standing uh, below the balcony, or below the, the uh, below the the tower. And here you see it's written in Russian with the a pre-revolutionary. Um, uh, it's a pretty revolutionary style here. Can you see? Yeah. Grish is gonna position <laughs> now trying to read it. So it actually this is the uh, the uh it's okay, I I can zoom it in. Exactly. So it was built by an architect Sarkisan. And Sarkisan, thank you so much, Carla. Thank you everyone for the coffee. Today. We really appreciate your support. It's been so essential for us. I want to show you, so Sarkisan, an Armenian-born architect, is actually the founder of, uh, of Georgian Art Nouveau and Eclecticism. So he built most of the houses in, in Sololaki. He had some of the wealthiest clients. So, and Sarkisan was a very, was a clever one because he basically would put his name somewhere where most people are likely to see it. And this is how he would create this really great promotion of his work. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And there's an interesting story. Visha, come on. Just a couple more minutes and I'm done. I'm, I'm saying it to Grisha. <laughs> so I want to take you to the backyard. There is a, there's a, there's a nice legend. Uh, that they had many children, so Sark uh, not Sarkisan, Sarkisan is the, ar the architect. So Kalantarov uh, had uh, many children, uh, six children. And uh, the traditional story has it that for every child born in the family, he would plant a cypress tree. I'm not sure whether it's true or not. Anyway, it's just a nice legend. But I want to show you something. The cypress, the two cypress trees are still here. They're still here. This is the backyard, and this used to be just a small garden. Obviously, in the Soviet times, it was all turned into uh, into communal apartments, but it still preserved the interior. And you'll see these stars of David. Again, he was not Jewish, but it doesn't it doesn't have to be uh, connected with uh, with Judaism. And you see, so the Moorish style on the top, and clearly the Oriental style below. So this is the sweet combination, I would say. I hope the connectivity here is fine. So let's see what there is at the back. Just a second. We'll be quiet. We'll be really quiet. Okay, looks like I'm intruding. Oh my goodness.
goodness. Look at that. Yes. Yes, people are living here. So this is one of the entrances. Нет, не открывай. Все так, стой. Стой так. Это выход. And this is the... На улицу. This is the exit to the street. And we've just... I assume this was the back entrance uh, for the for the servants. I assume it. But we now have to move. So I, <laughs> locals might not like it, and we might be told off for it. But I couldn't resist. I honestly couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah, let it be Star of David. I don't really, I don't really mind it to be a Star of David for sure. <laughs> it is unique, absolutely. It is unique. And the, so those two cypress trees. So I don't know where the other were, the others are. They might have just died because those were challenging times uh, for humans, let alone let alone trees and they still have the small garden here and the well of course i don't want to enter because it definitely looks like i'm intruding and i don't want to do that <laughs> and i don't want to teach my son bad things because I, i think i'm really uh, trespassing a bit but over there I think this is just a part of the decoration, uh, this decorative tiles that's been found and preserved. Really, look, it looks really nice. Yeah, and it, it yeah, definitely, uh, I've seen those lockers, so it looks like it's uh, partly Airbnb. Yeah, could be, easily. There are lots of Airbnbs here. Okay, Grish, let's go. Let's go. So... Just a second. Okay, so let, uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them now because this is the time for Q&A. <laughs> let me also go over the chat. I try to follow the chat, but with my eye trying to make sure Grisha doesn't fall uh, anywhere and crosses the street all right, it was a bit, a bit challenging. And also me losing my headset <laughs> wasn't really nice. Okay, so um, here we are. Please feel free to send us the questions. Again, if you missed any of the previous episodes, feel free to feel free to contact me, and I will send you the recording. This uh, live stream is going to be uh, available in the open access on my YouTube channel uh, for, 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 for a few days, basically. The next episode is already scheduled for next Sunday, uh, 6 p.m. local time, GMT plus 4. And Eventbrite can normally converts the times into your time zone, so it shouldn't be a confusion, but you can always contact me to double check. Uh, Oscar, yeah, Oscar is uh, sleeping at home and Misha is in Israel. Yes. Uh, and um, so what else? Today I'm doing another tour about the Hermitage Museum collection of Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. Today we're talking about Van Gogh, Van Gogh and also um, a, a group of artists, a uh, special one. Um, But I'll keep it a secret, so I'll just tease you a little bit. Let's put it this way. Um, yeah, Marilyn, sure. It's gonna be. I'm gonna make it available shortly on my YouTube channel, so you can catch with what you missed. Absolutely. Oh, my assistant is is really tired over there. <laughs> Are you okay, Grish? No. Are you okay? I'm not okay. Are you tired? <laughs> You're gonna make them dizzy, Chris. You're gonna make everyone dizzy. <laughs> okay, if you want to say something, you can say something. I am not much. Sleep. Uh, 
So I'm so happy that he's really coping with this language barrier and uh, he's talking more in English and he's like really, really interested in me reading him in English. It's just great. So I think it's been really useful just to take him with me on the tours and he's even more exposed to English than before. And also his school's been super productive in, in that as well. <laughs> Okay, so this is it. It's time to treat Grisha to some baby chino, right? You want to thank people for baby chino? Thank for baby chino. <laughs> and cappuccino. <laughs> and cappuccino for mommy. Baby chino for Grisha and cappuccinos for mommy. So on the very top uh, of the chat, so in the pinned message, there are links to my, uh, to my Buy Me Coffee and PayPal. We would really appreciate your support. That's what really keeps us running in the new country, in the new environment. Thank you so much for, well, just giving me this opportunity to do what I love doing the most, taking you on tours. Thank you for your support, for your patience with me and Grisha, for all the technical issues that we've, we've had to face. It's been quite challenging, but I'm so grateful for everything that we have and the great community supporting us. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in a few hours from now um, on a tour of the Hermitage Museum. Thank you so much, everyone. Just a second. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Azel. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Everybody is saying fantastic job, Grisha. Good job, Grisha. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> okay, time to go. Bye bye. Oh, this is so sweet. You want to do? Okay. Okay. Come on. Uh, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, now we switch the camera. Oh. Okay, you press stop. Press stop. Bye-bye.